Please join me in our call to worship. O oh God, you are our God. We've come seeking your face. Our souls thirst for you in this spiritually dry culture we live in. We've come looking for you in this sanctuary to see your power and your glory. We've come to praise and worship you with a joyful lips. Glory to God. Amen. Our opening song of worship, come and let us sweetly join. It's on your, in your hymnal on page 699. Set. We'll do the Old Testament reading from Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 11 from the CEB. Seek the Lord when he can still be found. Call him while he is yet near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the sinful their schemes. Let them return to the Lord so that he may have mercy on them. To our God, because he is generous with forgiveness. My plans aren't your plans, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my plans than your plans. Just as the rain and the snow come down from the sky and don't return there without watering the earth, making it conceive and yield plants and providing seed to the sower and food to the eater, so is my word that comes from my mouth. It does not return to me empty. Instead, it does what I want and accomplishes what I intend. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our song of worship, I Speak Jesus. And you may stand as you are willing and able. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. 
with every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus cause your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire i just want to speak the name of jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus cause your name is power your name is healing your name is love stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus And this is the call to offering, a time where we contemplate as we listen, listen to what is being sung, listen to what we are hearing in the music, and listening to God's voice. So let us continue to hear from God that we might bring an offering not only to our church, but to our God in a way that is glorifying to God. Thank you, Lord. If you feel so moved and would like to come forward and place your offerings in the plates, please do so during the music.
praise and thanksgiving, merciful God, for all that you have given to us and for the things that we have returned for you to your church and to your community. And we ask by the power of your spirit that you continue to lead and guide us with wisdom and understanding as to how we can continue to glorify you with the gifts that we have received from you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Would you please be seated? Through nine from the CEV. About this time, Jesus was told that Pilate had given orders for some people from Galilee to be killed while they were offering sacrifices. Jesus replied, Do you think that these people were worse sinners than everyone else in Galilee just because of what happened to them? Not at all. But you can be sure that if you don't turn back to God, every one of you will also be killed. What about those 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think they were worse than everyone else in Jerusalem? Not at all. But you can be sure that if you don't turn back to God, every one of you will also die. Jesus then told them this story. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. One day he went out to pick some figs, but he didn't find any. So he said to the gardener, For three years I have come looking for figs on this tree, and I haven't found any yet. Chop it down. Why should it take up space? The gardener answered, Master, leave it for another year. I'll dig around it and put some manure on it to make it grow. Maybe it'll have figs on it next year. If it doesn't, you can have it cut down. The word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. titled this message with a question, chop it down or nurture it? So that's from the parable that Jesus speaks about in the Luke reading in chapter 13. But I'm going to start with the Isaiah reading where he says, seek the Lord while he can still be found. Seeking God regularly is discipleship. This is a conversation kind of sort of that I've been having with some folks lately. What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Well, seeking the Lord regularly is discipleship. Discipleship requires us to seek God. And Isaiah says, seek the Lord while he can still be found. Call on him while he is yet near. Now is the time for us to seek God. Not just here on Sunday, not just when we pray over meals, but throughout each day, every day. And if not now, when? See, God said through Isaiah, my plans aren't your plans, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. See, if we have any chance of learning What we seek when we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, if we have any chance of understanding what God's will is, then we must do the work of seeking God in all circumstances. That is what is required of us as disciples of Jesus Christ. It is an intentional choice to seek God's plans for us because they are so much better than the plans that we have for ourselves. 
And then God also says through Isaiah, My word that comes from my mouth, it does not return to me empty. Instead, it does what I want, and it accomplishes what I intend. Now, I'll give you a brief illustration from my own life. You may or may not believe this, but when I was a much younger man, I used to enjoy engaging in sarcasm. That's what I did. In just about everything that I didn't care for, didn't like, that went on in and around me, I would be sarcastic, make sarcastic remarks about it. Now, I can't tell you honestly that that's totally gone from me, but God has been working that out of me for a long, long time. And that is the result of God's word working in my life, working that out of me. So instead of being sarcastic in front of other people, I can be more affirming in the presence of other people. That's much better than being sarcastic. That's something that God's word has done in my life, and I thank God for that. Now, in the gospel message this morning, Jesus says, you can be sure that if you don't turn back to God, every one of you will also die. Now, what does he mean there? He's talking about spiritual death. See, it is consistent in the Old Testament as well as the New. The Hebrew people regularly rebelled against God, and many of them died for their rebellion. And Romans 6.23 puts it this way. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Seeking God gives us the ability to avoid doing things like being sarcastic and nasty and all those other things that are not helpful to one another. And so we are instead attempting to live as God would have us live. God's will in our lives instead of our will in our lives. And even in the Old Testament, in this passage that Becky read for us from Isaiah, God is a forgiving God. Isaiah wrote, Let them return to the Lord so that he may have mercy on them, to our God, because he is generous with forgiveness. Now I'll give you a brief example of a time when I for sure recognized forgiveness in my life. And it was a point in time where I was recognizing that I needed to just simply repent of something that I had done. And I was in my kitchen, in my house, and I started to pray. And the presence of God came on me so strongly that I felt I had to go down to my knees because I was in such a strong presence of God. And I prayed, and I repented for what I had done. And at the end of that prayer, I felt the burden lifted off of me, and I had the assurance in my spirit, in my soul, in my heart, of God's forgiveness. And I am so grateful of that. God's promises are real. I felt it in my being in that one instance. There have been many others I can't tell you about now. But this forgiveness that is offered in Jesus' story of the fig tree that didn't produce fruit for three years, its owner came and threatened to cut it down. And then there's the gardener who comes and says, just wait. Give me a chance to nurture it for another year and we'll see if it produces fruit. Now in that story, what do you think the fig tree represents? The fig tree represents us. We are the fig tree. Jesus says the gardener is going to nurture that fig tree. The gardener can be us. 
We are called to nurture one another in our walk with Jesus Christ, in our faith journey. So we have a responsibility to each other to affirm and nurture one another in our Christian faith and our growth as devoted disciples of God. The fruit that we are to produce depends on which gifts God has given to us in our Christian service to others. Now, did you know, as followers of Jesus Christ, every single one of us has at least one spiritual gift, probably more. Those spiritual gifts are spoken of in three of Paul's letters, in Romans 12, in 1 Corinthians 12, and in Ephesians chapter 4. There are 20 spiritual gifts listed in those passages of Scripture. And did you also know that you can discover what your spiritual gifts are? The United Methodist Church, on its Discipleship Ministries website, has a spiritual gifts discernment inventory test that you can do. Now, I've done this one. I've done this one three times, and I've done a couple others prior to that. The first time I did a spiritual gifts inventory was over 20 years ago. My top gift at that particular time was the gift of helping that's where I was in my life. I was not a pastor at that time. So I was willing and able, by that spiritual gift, to help anyone with anything that I could help them with. But you know what my second spiritual gift was that I discerned about 22 years ago that surprised me? Teaching. I did not know that I had that gift. I have done several other spiritual gifts inventory tests since that time, and I did this same one last week just to see where my gifts were. Now, the last time that I did this spiritual given inventory discernment, my top gift was shepherding. I'm going to read to you the description of what shepherding means. It is the gift of guidance. Shepherds nurture others in the Christian faith and provide a mentoring relationship to those who are new to the faith. Displaying an unusual spiritual maturity, shepherds share from their experience and learning to facilitate the spiritual growth and development of others. Shepherds take individuals under their care and walk with them on their spiritual journeys. Many shepherds provide spiritual direction and guidance to a wide variety of believers. This is my top gift, but it wasn't that way 22 years ago. See, what I think God does with the, the gifts that God gives us is that in whatever circumstance God calls us into, and 20 years ago I was not a pastor, I didn't necessarily need that spiritual gift of shepherding as my top gift. But when God brought me into the clergy 11 years ago, God brought that spiritual gift of shepherding to the top. Because this is the gift that I need the most now to do the work that I'm called to do. Guess where that spiritual gift of teaching is at this point in time? It's not quite as high as it once was. And I actually think I know why. The second gift that I have is giving. That's where I am now. The third is faith. The fourth is healing. The fifth is discernment, and the sixth is teaching. I think I know why. I spent four semesters teaching at Canisius College, and I recognized that teaching was not my call at this point in time in my life. Being a pastor is my call at this point in time in my life. So that's why the spiritual gift of shepherding is on top. Teaching goes along with that, but it's down the list because there's other ones that God has placed in me. Now, I mentioned to you there's 20 gifts, spiritual gifts, that are listed in the Scriptures. Every one of us, if you are willing, can go through this gifts discernment journey, if you wish. Now, tomorrow, to follow up on this, I'm going to send out a church-wide email with the website where that spiritual gifts discernment list is. And if you so choose to take that, you're welcome to do it. 
It has 80 questions. It'll take you about 20 minutes to go through. It's not hard. It's very simple. The instructions are on the top. I also have a printout of this on my computer. And if you take this spiritual gifts test and you would like to come in and speak with me about the results and to perhaps better understand what gift you have or gifts you have at this point in time and where God is calling you to use them, I am here to help you do that because that's where God has placed me at this point in time. So I will send this email out tomorrow for anyone who wishes. And those of you who don't have email, if you would like this gift test, I have it on paper as well, and I can, I can give you a copy of it. I can even lead you through it if you would like. But this is what I got from my understanding of this parable of the fig tree. We are to nurture one another as best we can to help one another grow and to help one another produce the fruits that God has called us to produce at this time in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for giving us these gifts. I pray you will help us continue to discern them and to use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate Holy Communion with an open table. That means all are welcome to a fresh anointing of God's grace through receiving the sacrament. Join me in the confession prayer. Holy, Holy and, and awesome, awesome God, God, we stand, we stand in, in your, your presence, presence filled, filled with, with regret, great for our many, many sins, sins and failings. failings. Though, Though we have potential, potential for greatness and a, and a deep longing for goodness, we have, we have often denied our better selves and refused to hear your voice calling, calling us to rise to the full height of our humanity. humanity. There, there is weakness in us as well as strength. strength. At, At times, we choose, we choose to walk in darkness, darkness our vision obscured. obscured. We often do not look within and are at times unwilling to look beyond at those who need our help. O oh God, we are too weak to walk unaided. Be with us as a strong and wise friend and teach us to walk by the light of your truth. Amen. Please enter into a time of silent prayer. The pardon. This is the message we have heard from God and proclaim to you that God is light and in God there is no darkness. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus the Son cleanses us from all sin. Glory to God. Amen. If you would like to follow along with the sung responses in the hymnal, they are on page 19. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for forty days and forty nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai, for forty days and forty nights you gave us your commandments, and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, 
your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still, small voice. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your Spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted for forty days and forty nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during forty days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and cleansing of our hearts during these 40 days of Lent. May we be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Jesus Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He raised the bread and gave thanks. And then he gave the bread to his disciples and said, Take, eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was finished, he took the cup, he raised it and gave thanks. And then he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of my blood. It is the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so... In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And so, in remembrance, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. We ask you, Lord, Make these gifts be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And let us sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Amen.
ask the ushers to lead you in our usual pattern of going around to this side. I'll ask the servers to come forward. I believe it's Mimi and Rosalie. You come to this side, have your hands ready to receive a piece of bread, come to the center and receive it, and then come over to this side. Rosalie will offer you a cup, walk over here and receive it, and then drop the cup into the receptacle. If you prefer to be served in your seats, just please raise your hand and Connie will bring the elements to you. We also have gluten-free for those who are in need of it. The table is ready. All are welcome. Come and receive the gift of God. Choir, do you want to come down first? place no light is streaming now is the darkness vanished away see in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day gather us in the lost and forsaken Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink of compassion give us to eat the bread that is you nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true not in the dark of buildings confining not in some
Take the bread of life, broken for all my sin, your body crucified, to make me whole again. I will recall the cup, poured out and sad. To trade this sinner's end for your new covenant. Hallelujah. I'll live my life in
Amen. Would you join your hearts and minds with my words as we pray prayers of intercession? Glory to you, Lord. We praise you and thank you for the gift of Holy Communion, where you pour into us once again your grace and your mercy through a tangible means. I pray that each one that has received communion this morning will recognize something of what you are doing in each of our lives, something good, something new, something refreshing, something rejuvenating. And we thank you, Lord, that you give us the privilege to come before your holy throne in worship and praise and in intercession and prayer. And we lift these needs to you this morning. There are those who are in need of, diff- of help with their mental health issues, with their addictions, with their depression, with other personal issues that are going on that cause them to be in need of refreshment and rejuvenation and renewal. We ask you, Lord, in each of these persons' lives, bring the power of your healing into their minds, hearts, soul, and spirit. We lift to you also, Lord, Morgan, Lori, Carol, and Brian, who are all seeking healing in one form or another. You know exactly what their needs are. And we pray, Lord, by the power of your Spirit, that you will meet them as you see fit for their good. We lift also to you Anne, Glenn, Linda, and Eileen, who are also seeking healing, rejuvenation, and renewal. And we ask once again, Lord, that you would meet those needs as you see fit to do so for their good. We also lift to you Molly and Joe, Jason, and Ethan. For the needs that they have, Father, you know far better than we know. Meet those needs wherever they are. And help each of these persons that we have lifted to you this morning to recognize that you indeed are working in some good way in their lives. And for those persons that each of us has in our hearts and our minds at this moment that we desire to lift to you, we lift them to you now, either in the silence of our hearts or with our voices. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and every opportunity that you give to us to come before you with our petitions. We pray that you will indeed give us a new understanding that you are working, not only in their lives, but in ours. We also lift to you, Lord, needs in people's lives and in the life of the human family all over this world. We pray for restoration of relationships between friends, within families, within organizations, Lord. We pray for wisdom for our government officials who are in positions of authority over us. We ask you, Lord, to give them clarity in the way they govern so that they may rightly and justly govern all persons that are under their authority. Not only in a government in the United States, but in all governments all over the world. And Lord, where there are places in the world where there is strife, violence, and war, we ask, Lord, by the power of your Spirit, enter the minds and hearts of those who are involved and replace their hearts of war with a heart of peace so that there may be peace in those regions of the world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ because you called us to pray. And we trust that you hear us and that you will answer in your time and in your will. We thank you and praise you, for you are a great God. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand as you are willing and able at this time and sing our closing song of worship? 
Forth in Thy Name, which is hymn number 438. So we have worshipped, we have prayed, we have heard the word expounded, we have sung our praises to God, and we have received a gift from God. I pray that each one of us will spend some time in prayer today discerning what that gift is, and then seek God for instructions on how to use it. So go in peace. And serve the Lord wherever God takes you. In Jesus' name, amen. 